Okay, I actually think now that we're ahead of time and, and uh, by way of introducing Terry Minolio, who I think needs no introduction in eMERGE if anybody needs no introduction, I'm reminded that we're actually, uh, the, the decadal uh, anniversary, was it not about 2007? Yeah. So this is 2017, and uh, the apocryphal story of, uh, the, of the funding opportunity announcement that launched uh, what became eMERGE was uh, Terry's observation that, that NIH wanted to prove once and for all that clinical data was no good for research. <laughs> and I, I hope everyone in the room uh, agrees that we have successfully uh, rejected the null hypothesis. <laughs> Um, so, well, uh, what I've been asked to do is to put these, uh, to, to sort of give you a, uh, an overview of our uh, genomic medicine portfolio, portfolio so you have an idea of where eMERGE fits in all of this. So I thought it would probably be wise just to let you know uh, uh, or remind everyone of, of what the, the mission of our group is. And before that, we should sort of define what we consider genomic medicine to be. So um, a few years ago, NHGRI decided to, you know, it would be wise for, for people to put some bounds around this. And so we, we took a, a, a fairly narrow view this one, um, of an emerging medical discipline involving using genomic information in a patient's uh, uh, clinical care um, and um, uh, uh, the health outcomes and policy implications of that clinical use. Uh, we recognize that there's a lot of foundational work and association discovery work and other things that go into this, but we really kind of focused on that actual clinical use. And so our division then plans, directs, facilitates multidisciplinary research to identify genetic contributions to human health um, and advance approaches for use of genomic data in, to improve diagnosis, treatment, uh, and prevention of disease. So with that in mind, uh, just a very quick overview of, of the portfolio. Um, the Undiagnosed Diseases Network uh, is actually a common fund program, but it, uh, it actually originated at NHGRI as the um, uh, Undiagnosed Disease, uh, sorry, Undiagnosed Diseases Network is a common fund program. Undiagnosed Diseases Program is, is what uh, uh, Bill Gall started at the Clinical Center with the Office of Rare Disease Research, um, and it's uh, focused on diagnosing uh, rare and uh, new diseases. Uh, the NSITE program, Newborn Sequencing in Genomics and Public Health Practice, um, is a, 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 a joint program with the uh, Institute of Child Health and Human Development uh, on the use of newborn sequencing in the newborn period, sorry, the use of sequencing in the newborn period. Uh, the Clinical Sequencing Now Evidence Generating Research Program began four years previously as the uh, Clinical Sequencing Exploratory Research Program. Uh, and it's designed to explore infrastructure methods and issues for using genome sequencing clinical care. Uh, Emerge uh, now <clears throat> is in its 10th year, as, uh, as Dan pointed out, uh, now in its 11th year, actually, because we began just before uh, the end of October, at uh, the end of September uh, in 2007, to use biorepositories with electronic medical records for genomics. We actually weren't out to prove the clinical data were no good, but there were those who did not believe the, you know, the hypothesis that they were good, uh, and we managed to prove the, the contrary. Um, and then uh, IGNITE, uh, developing and disseminating methods for incorporating uh, genomic findings into clinical care. The ClinGen resource, clinical genomics resource, is, is developing and disseminating consensus information on genes and variants for clinical care. And then uh, we have an, a, a growing investigator-initiated portfolio uh, that's small, but we hope will will continue to expand. Uh, we have a couple of um, uh, program announcements out in clinical rec uh, sequencing research. That was only a, that was a one-time uh, solicitation, but we also have. Uh, and HIV AIDS drug response and comorbidities, uh, PAR, and one on, on severe uh, adverse drug uh, reactions. So, and this is ab about the amounts, of, the total amounts of money that are dedicated to that. Actually, this is wrong. This should be about 12. Um, and then the, the fiscal years you know, for them. So. so that's the overall portfolio. Obviously, we're, we're looking at this one, but to give you a, a little more context, um, I tend to consider these in terms of, of kind of the, the depth of patient characterization and, you know, spread across the breadth of implementation. So if you look at it that way, the UDN is the most in-depth um, view. M many of the patients are admitted for an entire week and studied intensively. Um, the NSITE program uh, is uh, uh, a, a little bit uh, less intense, but still a fairly deep dive into, uh, into a newborn and the health uh, uh, issues surrounding that person. So those have a much more of an individual patient focus uh, and look at multiple models for uh, uh, delivering this kind of care. Uh, the CSER program is a little bit broader. It looks at impact on clinicians and labs as well as integration into the healthcare system. 
while Emerge and Ignite are probably the broadest, uh, uh, not only uh, evidence generation, obviously, in CSER, but also looking at system-wide impact. And then ClinGen kind of overarches all of them because it's a resource for using this information in clinical care. Uh, just to give you an idea of timelines, um, and as Dan mentioned, Emerge started way back here, and so I didn't show that one. Uh, but uh, what's, what's shown here in sort of in solid lines are the, are the current um, um, phases, and then these are kind of projected uh, uh, phases. So we don't know that this one is going to happen, and we may decide today or at other times that it won't, but that's why there's a question mark. Uh, the CSER program began in fiscal, um, uh, at the beginning of fiscal 12, ran for five years, and now is, is going on for another four years, just awarded. Um, the IGNITE program um, uh, began, a number of these, as you can see, began in 2013, uh, and is uh, currently in solicitation for a second phase. Uh, the ClinGen resource was just recently renewed. The UDN is also in solicitation for a second phase. Um, the NSAID program uh, ran for its, is running for its initial five years, and it's not clear uh, what we're going to do with that in the future. We have a meeting coming up with the, um, uh, the NICHD, a joint meeting with them to try to determine uh, what its future should be. So, forward. Oh, and I should just point out, yeah, we, we are here uh, in, at the very beginning of uh, fiscal 18. Uh, the three programs that really look the most alike and that sometimes we're questioned, well, why do you have three of them? Why don't you just have one? Um, the reason we think we have three is that they have different emphases and require different expertise. But a question that we could ask you uh, might be, do we really need three or should we you know, consider making one big one or uh, some, some combination of those? So, so the seizure program, uh, which was uh, uh, recently renewed, as I mentioned, uh, the Emerge program and then the Ignite program uh, shown here. Um, and then sort of looking at CSER and Emerge together, uh, CSER has a, about 5,000 patients. It's uh, looking at community clinical scenarios, so uh, hopefully in, in routine practice, uh, focuses on the clinical encounter. Uh, it has a strong emphasis on increased ethnic and, and socioeconomic diversity, uh, evidence generation for clinical utility of sequencing, and real-world barriers to integrating genomic data into uh, clinical care. Uh, Emerge uh, has 25,000 patients, nine uh, sites. Um, the electronic phenotyping has been an emphasis from the very beginning, um, and it, put, it has more of a system-wide focus. Uh, this particular whoops, oh, uh, this particular phase um, is looking at um, uh, health outcomes of rare variants or penetrance, as I like to think of it, of rare variants in about 100 clinically relevant genes. Uh, so what can we find of rare variant? <coughs> Is it rear variant carriers, Gail? Now I'm afraid to say anything with, <laughs> with a, a, a rare variant harborers. Um, <laughs> carrier is for recessives, and some of us get really irritated by a carrier of not recessives. So, so thank you. <laughs> At least one of us gets really irritated. <laughs> Um, System-wide system impact of uh, reporting actionable variants um, and improved uh, electronic phenotyping, which has always been a focus, novel variant discovery, and electronic clinical decision support. And then what they, they tend to have in common uh, are integration in the electronic medical record, clinical impact of return of results, and uh, concerns about data sharing. And then Emerge and Ignite, so I've already described Emerge. Uh, Ignite has, uh, uh, for its next phase, and actually currently, has about 15,000 patients. Uh, we're anticipating four to six sites in diverse real-world clinical settings. It also has a very strong emphasis on enhanced diversity. Um, its focus is on pragmatic trials and clinical utility of established genomic medicine interventions. Uh, as I said, increased ethnic and socioeconomic diversity and uh, hoping to generate generalized knowledge, uh, generalizable knowledge on the use of trials in genomic medicine interventions. So NHGRI can't uh, do pragmatic trials of every genomic medicine intervention, and we wouldn't try to. What we would like to do is to sort of set a paradigm for how this work can be done. Um, and then they uh, also share EMR integration, cost effectiveness, and patient clinician education. Um, so I'll stop there. Um, many thanks to my colleagues at NHGRI and our uh, genomic medicine working group, as well as all of the investigators uh, in these programs and the participants, uh, and then the, the programs themselves. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions for Terry? Uh, 